The topics we discuss are many. No story too bold to talk about. Strictly our own opinions, but they are opinions from people like you. Welcome to the Naked Podcast. So there's there was a YouTuber that you told me about recently. He was a kid who something toys, Adam's toys or something. Yeah, yeah. fucking million dollar account. It's a yeah. He's a six year old that, and he just bought like a multi million dollar house, right? Yeah. yeah, I heard a story about it. Yeah. How? He just plays with toys and he gives toys reviews. So people, pe- big companies give him toys and money to play with their products for his videos. And other kids yeah. watch him play with it and he reviews it for kids. Yeah. So it's literally the family of three or four, however many kids they have. But they're really, really protective of exactly what they say. How and like they help them like. But even then, it's the just content. one big ad. One yeah. big ad. Yeah. It's fucking twenty. And a child's ad. doing it. But you know what? Who who to give better um, insight than a kid? Exactly. Yeah, on toys that they play with. But at the same time, with the internet and with things like YouTube and everything coming up, I just don't feel like kids are getting the chance to be kids anymore. And no. they're rushing into this, you know, ooh, uh, like that's good for him that he's getting that jump on life. But at the same time, life can wait until he's older. Yeah. That's some of my issue with Greta in her coming out and being a big activist. I'm happy that she has her voice and that she's spreading what she wants to say. But at the same time, she should be in school playing with her friends and enjoying those teen years. Yeah, she's like, 16 years old. I remember my teen years. They were so important and they actually molded me to who I am. Yeah. You feel like she's getting robbed of that experience. Yeah. A lot of people in the world are not going to listen to a 16-year-old girl yell at them. And that's evident, you know, I don't know you don't want to go here, but it's evident whenever world leaders are calling her a brat or yeah, something like, like the, that. Yeah, like the president of Brazil called her a brat. Mm-hmm. And Trump, you know, told her she needed to go take a break or whatever. Yeah, she needed to go take – chill. He said, she, he said, chill, Greta, go take a rest. Yeah. And so fucked up. she changed that on her Twitter bio. <laughs> Chilling and taking a rest. It sucks because she's 16. I remember when I was 16 having fun, you know, driving around – Going to Hastings when that was a thing. Yeah, oh, and, I miss Hastings. you know, watching what she talks about and the way she talks about everything, it's great, but you can tell as you watch every speech she gives, she gets better and better. And I don't know if it's that her, if that's her. Or she's getting written for. Or if she has, she's speaking for somebody else. And she does say that she speaks for her whole, whole organization. And that's cool, yeah. but a 16 year old shouldn't have to do that what do we need to do as adults to get this job done so that child can be a child right All the exactly boomers need to just get out the fuck out the office let us step into the leading role did we need you, to step into it eventually agreed did you see did you actually read her timepiece i didn't read the timepiece i Haven't tried but everything i looked up and i was trying to research it it was all about how trump was <clears throat> mocking her it wasn't about her oh. or what she was talking about or anything oh. about her it was all about you. trump and it just got i just got overwhelmed so i read i read through her timepiece and what she had said how it, how it happened was her they went through school the teacher talked about global warming and you know for most of the kids it was like oh sad day but she has Asperger's. She, she has Asperger's. So she's on the spectrum. She couldn't let it go. She went, she was malnourished. She wouldn't eat anything. She was just so concerned with the plan. Like, what What are we going to do, you know, for tomorrow? And see, that's some of the issues. So, like, the United States, since 2010, this decade, we've started on a decline of what we're producing, our CO2 emissions. Yeah. I mean, we're actually the numbers lowering like hey we're making progress like we see things are getting better how are we making progress so like what what are so we're down 10 percent from 2000 so the amount that we were putting out in 2010 to the amount we're putting out today is 10 percent lower well that's great but like what are we doing though like are we putting more regulations we're converting more to wind energy we're funding people to lower their energy usage they have all these different rebates to help you convert completely to led you yeah. lower how much you use, they don't need to produce so much. And the smart thermometers and everything else. Yeah. So mm. I think those are the ways we need to go. Doing stuff like that and promoting stuff like that is way better than standing up in front of 50,000 adv- adults and saying, you fucked up, you idiots. You know what I mean? It's like, it sucks that she has to say that. I mean, she's not wrong. Yeah. But it's also like, you know, she's getting up, she's bringing attention to the problem, which is great. But what is also, what is she doing to help? Well, and see, 
that's some of the thing with her. Every big stunt that she's done to show, oh, it can be done. Well, yeah, like, so she sailed in her solar yacht, right? But her sailing over in her solar yacht, she still had to have an entire, her family and crew flew here anyway. So it was all for nothing. Mm -hmm. Then they had to fly a crew here to man the ship to go back so they can get repairs. They brought it back and then she sailed back. So it was, it was just kind of like a long drawn out thing. A media stunt. And it was all a media stunt. I'm just so tired of that. I'm just so tired of that. All she like, had to do was just go fly coach. For real. <laughs> if you just fly coach, like, okay, I'm doing my part. I'm flying with everybody else. I'm just like you. Let's do better, you know? I mean, the fact yeah, of the matter is, is that we are a modern society who have expectations of being instantaneous or being there as fast as possible. That's great. We should make our science compatible with that. How can we come at this from a cleaner approach but, yeah but coming from a business standpoint like that's not that's not financially viable but it's gonna right have now. to be it's yeah. gonna have to be i agree i agree we shouldn't have to rely on oil we shouldn't have to worry about the middle east taking the oil and leaving us all but in the dark see at the moment our two options are we either use oil which everyone's okay with mm -hmm. and we just pollute or we use nuclear we use thorium i don't think we should use everyone's nuclear. scared but the, Look at what happened to Chernobyl. I don't. Believe yes, but that was also clear. what thirty years, you know, forty years ago. Yeah. Do, do you not think we can do better if if we actually invested into it? And that's we're not using plutonium like they did. We're using mm -hmm. thorium. Why don't we use hydrogen, well, a non-nuclear well, element that's, that's to what, create energy? That's what thorium's more on the side uh, of. It's non-weaponized. Okay. It's okay. I got gotcha. you. It's a non-weaponized. You know, I didn't even know this source. was an option. Forgive me, I, I wasn't educated. Yeah, I, I didn't even know this was an option. So made, like, I'm like, what's the problem? I made Marco go watch the TED Talk on it. <laughs> nice. Well, send me that link because I want to listen to it. I want to yeah. learn about it. And they can make sure to put like better regulations in place, better safeguards, um, better backup plans. Yeah, maybe so actually right now, in. the question is, why aren't we at least funding something? Why aren't we at least exploring this option? We're not at all. Because, again, oil oil is easier money. and you don't have to pay a shit ton of scientists to continue to conduct research after research after research you're just paying for manual labor exactly you just kick you know indigenous people out of their homelands in alaska burn the fucking amazon, amazon. Mm -hmm. just for fucking this is another thing that happened this year what a bummer i can't believe we're yeah. gonna lose it you know that's our the they consider that the lungs of the earth Mm -hmm. Yeah, it produces the most oxygen. And, and it the was the people... last untouched <gasps> forest. Yeah, and the people we left in charge of it, are, they they don't care. You know, I read something on Twitter earlier about uh, people of power. Uh, it's not people of power who become corrupt. It's corrupt people who go out seeking power. So the more powerful uh, positions that we open and we place, the more those corrupted people are going to want to flock to that you know, coming from a journalism background like you did. Did you hear about the new bill they passed in California this morning? Which one? No. Freelancer can only work this much for your company so many times a year. What? And, and what their what goal the was, was they were trying to limit the amount of people can freelance so that companies, instead of freelan hiring freelancers, they hire them on full time. That makes sense. But what ended up happening is that companies like Vox announced Short, shortly after, a couple hours after that, that they were going to lay off hundreds of people before Christmas. Of course, oh, hundreds gosh. to prove a point. Of course, and they now would. and then, so they're moving. They're taking those jobs out of California, and they're hiring freelancers in like Arizona and Nevada and the surrounding California states. California is killing itself, man. Yeah, it's killing itself. People are leaving California at an alarming rate. But I can't blame them. Why would you pay full time people where you can pay? freelancers right who work for you so many times out of the year you don't have to pay them benefits you don't have to pay them a you know pto package you don't have to pay anything but and then the few people that were talking about it and complaining they go well i'm a freelance writer i do a travel blog my job is to travel around and write about the food i've seen and where yeah. i stay and i can't do that anymore because no company is going to pay me to travel it yeah. just doesn't work that way. They fired me because of this. So now I have to find a new way to do what I do. 
Jesus. You're going to have to fund it yourself or find your own company. Patreon it. I don't know. Like, Honestly, like it's so many good creators are moving more and more towards Patreon. Like, We started a Patreon immediately off the bat. It, it's just... Some of it is also just nowadays you got to have all your bases covered before you even start. It's really yeah. interesting that like you said that because we just watched um, a TV show called Ugly Delicious where they lit- these this group of chefs. Well, it's about this chef named David Chang who's like a renowned chef. Like he's been in so many different publications. He's known throughout the chef world. But they also talk about this other group which is Gnome. And this, this chef of Gnome, his team goes from place to place opening up pop-up restaurants. Kind of similar like how companies are not going to pay to that like you have to be your own entrepreneur like he is he has his own chef with his own restaurant his own brand his own team and it's pretty amazing that they're able to do stuff like that but i mean they only got there because they started at the ground up you know they put in the hard work they put in the time they put in the labor they built the front their foundation they were able to move up you know their ladder and so now that they have that flexibility to go out and we watched that episode about tacos and oh my gosh it was just so cool to see them actually go back down to the the heritage of the Mexican roots, especially of the tortilla. That was so cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm glad we watched that yesterday. Keelan, you said something really funny yesterday that I thought it kind of stuck with me about, you know, the creation of the corn tortilla and how, you know, the Aztecs did it. And then when the Spanish came, they missed their bread, so they introduced wheat and that made the flour tortilla. And Keelan instantly said, so flour tortillas aren't a white thing after all? <laughs> Because <laughs> every time, especially here in San Antonio, it's a hev- heavy Mexican base. Um, people are very proud of the, their street tacos and their their corn tortillas. If you don't get the corn tortillas, well, you're not Mexican. The, yeah, no. Yeah. Street tacos have to have a corn tortilla. Yeah, that's just how it is. Yeah, like have both options. I will get from both. <laughs> oh. I love corn and flour tortillas. I love fajita and flour. All that's been going on is why I have trouble trusting the media. Just for the simple fact that everything's going on, right? And they've made this huge big deal about bullying. And then you have this video coming across Twitter of this one child getting beat by six other children. And it's just like, really? This is what we're teaching and we're going to promote and let kids do? And no one comes out against it? No one says this is wrong? No one even reports it? No, I, the video is disgusting. I've seen it multiple times already just to try and analyze it. it there's no analyzing of it. There's no more to begin with. I want to know what happened before the fight started. Okay, so hold on. Let's back it up. This video showed this boy getting beat up by kids. It was like nine of them on a bus. Yeah. And the reason why the mom had posted the video on Twitter and the reason why that she had said that they were beating him up is because he was wearing a MAGA hat. And earlier that day, they somebody had spilled milk on his head. So they were beating him up for wearing a MAGA hat. Yeah, he been sounded like he's been bullied since he put the MAGA hat on. And that's somewhat everybody needs to understand that if you put that hat on and you go out in public, this is what you're going to have to expect. And that's bullshit. And it's bullshit, but at the same time, if if you put it on and you go out knowing that there's going to be a fight, you should be ready for that fight. But this is a kid. Clear. And I think I don't think the kid should be involved in exactly. this Exactly. And but you look at these kids who chose to beat on him, right? They chose to beat on him. Why? Why is that? Was we don't know the full story, granted. You know, yeah. that's still coming out. So we don't know if he was spouting off racist shit to these girls or, you know, we don't we don't know any of that. We just see it at face value with children beating other children. That is not OK. And you know, this is what we're teaching them. And this is not OK as a reflection of adults. I completely agree. I think that we Ethan had posted this on Twitter. Somebody had commented and they kind of gone back and forth. Jennifer. Jennifer Ramirez, she kind of went back and forth talking about this is not okay. President Trump is, you know, he's advocating for this, you know, type of behavior to happen. But it was black kids beating on a white kid. You know, it's not okay on either side. Mm -hmm. And both sides have the reason to be emotional. There's there's a lot of emotional stuff going on. But we have to channel that into passion to fix it. I had to watch what I said and take a step back before I responded to her. Talked about that. Taking a step collect your thoughts and respond he's come out and disemboweled every single shooter he's had to come out and disavow because the media hounds him and attacks him over it not just the media everyone's fucking attacking him the story's fucking old leave the it's poor a, orange alone it's a yeah. horse it's mm. it, beating a dead horse and, by this point. but 
so when this all happened, Biden came because Trump said his comment to Greta. Now, everyone agrees. It was she's a kid. Don't run your mouth. Just ignore her. If if you don't like what she's saying, you don't want to deal with her. Just ignore her. Right? Yeah. No, nope, you didn't like anybody talking about your son, Trump. Yeah. In all fairness, his son did not or has chosen to step out of the spotlight. Greta has chosen to step into it. And that's for her cause. I don't think his son had a cause, but <laughs> uh, even though his He's just still sons, a child. I mean, Obama's kids, they were front and center in limelight. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they talked about him. Trump doesn't talk about his son. Like, his son has requested not to be part of anything. Making comments about his son is a little too far in my book. Making comments about children in general is too in far. In general, yeah. Trump yeah. was over the line going after her. But on the other hand, she's chosen to step into the limelight. So she has to expect some of it. I think they, I think his entire family stepped away from the limelight. Like, they don't want to be involved. They want to... Oh, no, his kids are pretty involved. Oh, well, the old Like, one. Trump Jr. and... Ivanka, they're pretty yeah. involved. And then on the other hand, this one kid's getting beat up. And nobody's talking and about no it. And no one's even said a word about it. Because it doesn't sell money. The media's going to report on what sells them money. And not only that, not only that. It doesn't matter. Where's the parent frustration? You know, where's the school bus driver? He should have been. He didn't fucking stop, Keelan. This is not okay. He didn't stop. <laughs> he didn't is... give a fuck. The, the one news quote unquote video that i could even find on the matter was a small time youtuber i think he had about two thousand followers yeah that was like the closest thing i could find to a news video on it and then that led to his uh like when you went to try to look at the video it led to a news website which then led to the Twitter post about it, which happened in November. This shit happened November twenty twenty. What? Why is this not going Facebook viral? Yeah, well, because parents it, sharing it. No, because the kid was thing, wearing a mega hat. Just because the mother is a known Trump supporter, she's a Trump supporting personality, and I guess he decided that he was going to do it, and he got attacked over it. This is what I said on Twitter earlier: is that these kids are seeing this divide just widen and they're they're picking a side so they can be included or they feel like they have to why are we putting this responsibility and pressure on our children to pick a side when we all can't fucking talk like adults discussing the matter with jen she kept bringing it back to trump and the matter had nothing to do with trump i i know i said but i was talking to about something joe biden did because joe biden went on air and called out Trump for picking on Greta. But he can't come out and defend some kid getting beat up by a bunch, bullied by a bunch of other kids. Right. It should be a collective, unified response of this is not okay, protecting the children. Exactly. This is not okay. And if he would have said something like that, he would have gained a lot of credibility in my book. Mm -hmm. But him not saying a word about it. Of course. It it ruins it. Yeah. yeah. It, It shows that he's only there for the narrative. He's not there for any. It's disheartening. Yeah. With the end of the year coming up, I really just hope that 2020 starts the decade where humans can come together and bridge this rift bridge this divide come together for a greater purpose of cleaning up this planet becoming better people and being nicer to each other fuck yeah yeah i agree i agree with that absolutely yeah. we need a keelan for 2020 keelan 2020. no baby yoda 2020 baby, baby yoda, yoda 2020, 2020. keelan is vice president yeah <laughs> i'm voting i'm voting for philip defranco 2024 but so a lot I'm... of it comes back that i think we need to take a step back and we need to start looking at a lot of our political system we really do. we need to start getting term limits on things we yep. need to set the the age minimums were set back when you know you were lucky to live to 50 yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean yeah so i'm okay with 35 being the minimum but we got to start setting a maximum it, it's just no we got to have a cycling in a stable competent you know, senile president. So, yeah. If they can sit there and put the regulations in the workforce for 65 is the retirement age, then 65 needs to be your retirement age. So one of the thoughts that I was having earlier, you know, and I think you can relate to this too. When I hear Trump speak and talk and do all this shit, I think of my grandpa. Honestly. <laughs> think of it as your grandpa. Oh, yeah. Right? My grandpa, just sit down. You've had too much to drink. And... and He's done a lot, and he knows how to get things done a certain way, but 
It's his way to do things. As a businessman. Yeah. But I've learned how to deal with my grandpa growing up, you know? Mm-hmm. I learned how to use that. <laughs> okay, you crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy man. Appease him, humor yeah, him, you're just put like, him in the corner for the night. Until we're done with him. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really cool, grandpa. That's cool about the aliens. Here's your scotch. Just here, you want to go sit around the fire and watch the fire? Yeah, grandpa, it's okay. The but commies who, are gone. But who could reel in Trump like that? Who, who can handle no Trump one like can. that? No one can. But the issue with our system is it getting to the point where we need somebody like Trump. Mm-hmm. Just a, Trump's great at pointing out bad things. If you think about it, all Trump ever does is just point things out. And you're just like, God, God he sounds like my fucking parents. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boomers. Yeah. And... and but we get to the point where we need that, I think. Yeah. We need to see what the issue is so that we can address the issue and correct it. I mean, that's a really optimistic way of summing up Trump's presidency so far. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to be optimistic. You know, but, you know, praying for Trump's failure is to pray for the failure of all us all. Yeah, because he represents us. Yeah. I yeah. get it. So I would rather wield the sword than face the sword. That's medieval term right there. Down with the government. <laughs> Anarchy. Like, Briggs gun. Pew. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it oh. I'll bring a gun to a sword fight. Check us out on Patreon. www.officialmillennials.com Catch us uh, at hashtag NakedPodPlay. We get in some tweets out during our D&D game day. We promise to do weekend. better. Yeah. Okay, we got really into the game last time. We kind of <laughs> forgot about it. <laughs> um, Best excuse ever. Right, yes, yeah. exactly. And we're going to try to figure out a way to play Jackpack's party with you guys, because that would be a lot of fun. That would be really cool. I'm totally down. Catch us next time. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. I'll, I'll talk to you all next decade. This, this is an, an official Millennials production. production.